Welcome everyone, I'm Kieran, your host for today, and I'm an author and AI expert with 30 plus years experience in automation and artificial intelligence. Today, we'll explore the fundamentals of AI, its applications, ethical considerations, and how HR professionals can get started with this transformative technology. Make sure you stay to the end. We've got some really straightforward tips that will help you start your, your journey. For those attending, we'll give you perspectives from HR and AI experts, but also break down the jargon so that you can start to understand what we're dealing with. Our series of podcasts will take you right back to basics to get a handle on the terminology, advances, and all the essential prompts you need. Today, I am joined by Claire Nutt, a chartered CIPD member and digital transformation expert in HR. Claire specializes in transforming human resource practices through technology, mindset, and modern business processes. Welcome, Claire. Thank you so much, Claire. I'm delighted to be able to join you today as well and chat about AI. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's dive in and give the audience what they want. So, Claire, what is artificial intelligence? Well, I think in its simplest form, it's that computer-based knowledge that we ever wanted access to and now that we have access to we're not quite sure what to do with it um so I'm I'm going to talk a little bit around my experiences and share my knowledge I mean I'm not a developer um, my background is not IT I don't have any IT formalized qualifications but about a year ago I made it my passion to get get to grips and understand what AI was but in particular how it was going to impact the HR profession and honestly, I'm, it's colossal and I am struggling to keep up as well. But I wanted to understand how it could actively impact in, in, in a positive way in the HR profession. So really in its simplest form, it, well, it's the national cyber security definition. I think they say that the computer system basically performs tasks usually required by human intelligence. But that's extremely broad and doesn't really cover or give a level of understanding of what AI can actually do for us. But I think personally, AI isn't the big bad wolf that everybody's making it out to be sometimes. I think of it like my productivity partner. So when I reframe it like that, it actually doesn't sound so bad. You know, it's not going to be this big bad thing that's coming to steal our jobs or even run the world, maybe. We're, we're really not sure. But it's that collective knowledge that we've never had access to but the question then comes now that we have that knowledge who holds the power and where does that lie and how do we use it and how do we use it ethically but to our advantage as well um so i was reading recently that gartner they did some research and they basically said that around 34 percent of hr leaders are exploring ways to integrate hr or use cases uh, and opportunities within their organizations but i think the sooner that hr leaders gain an understanding as to what HR is or what AI is in HR and how it can help them, the easier it's going to be to possess that knowledge and understand the potential of how they can use it in best practice as well. Hmm. Well, how do you think this will impact skills and career paths? It is so uncertain to say. Um, I mean, if you had asked me 12 months ago, my answer would have been extremely different. And I know you and I have had these conversations too, but we are operating in a very different world. Um, and I mean, I have written job descriptions and recruited within HR for over 14 years. And where we've previously asked for six months experience using Microsoft packages or understanding of databases, that will totally change. You know, we'll be looking for advanced digital capabilities um, and not even an understanding of AI, but how it's been successfully implemented into organizations as well. So I think careers themselves will look very, very different. And the role of HR is changing. And we've felt that so profoundly over the last two years. So it's, it's one of the reasons why I started my business to help those organizations understand technology and bridge that gap. But HR alone, doesn't have the skills to navigate all of this. So my, my view is that those basic admin and analytics skills are dead. You know, that's what AI and automation will be doing for us. But we need to understand how tech's gonna work for us in our jobs, because remember, it's the productivity partner. It's not about replacing the human interaction in the workplace, but are we prepared, you know, for AI to be making those strategic decisions? And one of those decisions are maybe only two months away you know are are we equipped with the knowledge and the tools of how we actually do that 
I think for our workforces, so thinking about the wider organization, I mean, the skills gap, that, that technology skills gap in the UK has been widely reported for over a decade. And that gap is actually holding us back from implementing a lot of what AI can offer us. Um, and that's maybe something we're going to talk about in one of our future podcasts as well. Um, but interesting, I think we, we need to embrace it. You know, we need to recognise that things are changing. CIPD research has recently um, looked at respondents across the UK and the, there was very few who actually responded to acknowledge that the way that their HR functions operate are going to change with AI. So it does shock me a little that with digital HR, the way that a function operates is so slow to change. So that impact of the digital transformation is really only being felt in larger organizations where they have the resources or capacity. So it's time to start you know, building on some of those skills and gaining that understanding, I feel, anyway. It's interesting that the team that you want to lead it, uh, because HR should be leading the digital yeah. and human worker transformation, from what you're describing are the least likely to evidence set from the top. And yeah, as ever, you and I will know, Claire, leaders act as lighthouses. And if it's yeah. a very dull light, then we're going to end up on the rocks or going somewhere else. If it's a very bright light, then we should end up in that direction. So surprising and maybe a lesson for HR leaders. But if we go back a little bit, you mentioned ethics and risks, and that leads us on to you know legal frameworks and bias, because there's a moral and ethical implication to introducing AI. Mm -hmm. How do we navigate that minefield in HR? It's extremely difficult right now, and I think Brexit has really left this in such a mess as well, particularly in Northern Ireland. Um, from a legal perspective, the Information Commission officers has released some guidance at the end of April there, and that's very, very recent for organisations to help them get an understanding of strategically how they should operate AI in their businesses. But that's still very much a de facto regulator that there's no written prescriptive rules or regulations around this and there's no specifics for employers yet so I think businesses whilst they maybe from a senior leadership level want to embrace AI from an operational and strategic level they still need the tools to be able to do that and um, CIBD is an excellent source of information for HR practitioners, practitioners to help them get started so they are understanding the ethical considerations in the use of AI in the workplace and technology and people sits very squarely now on that profession map. So it's a core knowledge area. And notice that it's not technology or people, it's both working together. So it's ensuring that you get the correct advice and guidance around your AI strategy and your policy and the governance processes that sit around that. I mean, AI, AI is such a wide topic, but HR and organizations are expected to have all the answers already. You know, we're being asked, what should our policy be? Uh, what do we train our staff in? How do we successfully implement a digital strategy? What decisions do we allow AI to make? What are the ethical risks and considerations? And now we're starting to see some litigation coming out of that, albeit mostly in the US, around how AI has been used to make particular decisions and the questions that are arising around that as well. It, it is, it's not, doesn't remove your liability. That still sits squarely with the organisation too. So, it's difficult to navigate what the right approach is, but I would absolutely say Information Commissioner's Office, office and the CIPD together and using those experienced individuals to provide guidance and support to at least get a policy in place to start with and guide your organisation. Yeah, it's understandable, and isn't it, if you're legally liable but don't understand what's in the black box? Mm -hmm. Why would you sign up to that? And would you mentioning, you know, a, a tumult of change will I invest today and regret it tomorrow? So again, not the easy one, but as you said, the advice is there, go to the various uh, sources or fonts of knowledge, collate that and then make your best step forward. Uh, yeah. Don't forget folks, stay on, we'll give you a little bit of advice and a fact sheet at the end here as well to help you as part of your HRAI guidance as well. So Claire, with all of the uh, lack of knowledge, all of the confusion and tumult, what advice would you give companies who want to start exploring AI in HR? I think start with assessing your current state. You, you need to have an understanding of your organization 
and where you stand in terms of adopting AI and that digital maturity. Some conversations I have with clients are still even struggling to get to grips with the software they already have access to. So trying to introduce AI when there isn't that maturity in an organization can be extremely difficult. You know, you need to walk before you can run. So make sure you're assessing that landscape and, you know, revising those digital strategies to make sure you've got something that's there for success. And the majority of them will fail because of planning. So definitely assess that current state. Then I would say protect your organization. We've already touched on it, but your employees are likely using AI, whether you, you're aware of it or not. Um, so I would say a robust AI policy in place really sets the parameters for use and it protects that confidential information, that business critical information. And if, if you're not making them aware not to share confidential data, they potentially could be doing it already. So I would absolutely say have that robust policy at least in place. Um, Next up, I would probably start small. So try and implement AI in some low risk areas or high impact to try and demonstrate the value to the wider teams, to the wider organization and get some quick returns. Things like power apps, if organizations have access to Microsoft, they'll likely already have some degree of a license for that. And they're phenomenal for creating some really quick wins in that digitization and automation piece alongside the AI as well. But we'll talk a wee bit more in our future podcasts about that too. Um, for the teams, I would say invest in the training. You need to be able to upskill your HR department or your HR team, or maybe your HR team is just you. Um, you can't teach others until you learn yourself. So I would say absolutely start to invest in yourself. Understand how you can effectively use the tools you've already got. You know, don't go sourcing big platforms or trying to big build big models. You don't need to. You've got some really great innovative tools that are accessible at your fingertips as well so get to know how it works and invest in that training beyond that then if you are trying to develop something a little bit bigger speak to experts you know come and have a chat with one of us and um, do your research online look at other organizations and what best practice you know CIBD have a couple of good case studies as well so it's useful to try and explore those and see if it's something that fits for your organization too um, and I would say stay informed AI is not something you can learn about in isolation and leave it for six months to come back to it. I mean, we've just had ChatGPT 4.0 or 4.0 and the conversations that I've had with it alone are mind blowing. The empathy, the language, oh, the emotion, all of it. And I can't believe that's happened in such a short space of time as well. So stay informed and stay on top of it. So make sure you're aware of what's happening and how the changes basically potentially are going to impact any AI strategies or policies that you have in place. And that's more than enough to get people started. I like that advice. I, I use the phrase digital Darwinism. You know, you need to change, you need to run to catch up. Otherwise, uh, you may go the way of the dinosaurs. So Claire, mm -hmm. what final advice would you give to the audience listening to walk away with? I would say probably a lot of what we've already talked about, but embrace the change. Uh, that's the big thing. AI and that digital transformation is inevitable and it's coming even faster than you think it is. I mean, I'm struggling to keep up with the developments too and teach myself and then teach my clients and then integrate and embrace that. But if you can embrace that change proactively, it will help you to stay ahead of that competition and, and, and give that competitive edge. Definitely assess your digital readiness. You need to have the basics covered to make sure you're ready to start to integrate anything in your business proposals or even your organizational objectives as well. You need to have the appetite to be digital. So make sure that you can assess that landscape before you move into that space. Definitely make sure that ethical use of AI is integrated into your policy. Consider that. Consider what types of prompts are used, you know, what data is being fed into it. And remember, this isn't somebody sitting behind a computer giving you responses. This is all based on patterns and it's all based on data that you feed it. So you will inevitably, if you're using closed models or, or certain restrictions, or even just in the way that you prompt, you will inevitably create some degree of maybe bias within that. So you have to have an awareness. And HR practitioners are great at that. You know, that's drilled into us from a recruitment perspective or even um, employee relations when you're making decisions is having that objective view make sure you apply that whenever you're using AI in any of those processes so that they're fair and transparent as well but 
I think you and I have talked a lot about this. The, the key for me is leveraging the human strength. Um, you're augmenting, not replacing. And that's something you say a lot, um, Karen, in, in a lot of, of, of your content. I firmly believe that too. I think some of the human touches are replaceable in HR functions, but and you've said this before too, there's this 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 line that's bandied about that you won't be replaced by AI, but you may be replaced by someone that knows how to use it. So don't make that you, you know, leverage your human intelligence within this artificial intelligence and explore its potential because it it's unlimited. It's unlimited. We're, we're the only ones limiting it by our questions, by our prompts and by the information that we give it. So try to start to use that to see how it can be your productivity partner. And probably finally, I would just say, have fun with it. Um, and probably one thing I would ask our listeners and viewers is how many of you already have Microsoft Active Directory accounts or use Microsoft as part of your organizational um, IT access. And if you do, you already have access to four really powerful tools that are powered by AI. And if you added in some sort of generative AI subscription to that or even coaxed your employer into releasing Copilot, you know, that's something that, that's going to literally catapult you in the speed of your decisions, your data analytics. I mean, I saw on the release video from um, OpenAI, the desktop version is now going to allow you to share your screen. So they're going to see our content. So if you've built fantastic data analytics, you're going to be able to use AI, AI to say, how can I make this better? Or what am I not seeing in these results? You know, what can I can I use this for? Or how how can I improve the productivity in this? You know, so it's it's taking what we already know and do, but supercharging it. And that's the way I see AI and the use within HR as well. I like that. Or monitor screens and <laughs> better, better recommendations for Facebook. <laughs> yeah. as well. So what are we going to give the audience, Claire, who've listened in to our podcast? Yeah. yeah, I think it's really key to get started. And that's been the message from me. Don't be afraid of it. Have some fun with it and try and get started. So HR practitioners have probably been to a lot of webinars or in-person events where they're talking around AI. And there's a lot talking around and not a lot maybe taking action. So I would say you've probably used the, the generic generative prompts to say, write me a job description for this role I'm advertising for this post. Try to think beyond that. So I would say, and we can maybe add this to some of the comments when we, sh we share the podcast, add a specific prompt for your performance management and your performance management review processes. So your prompt would be generate a comprehensive performance review template for a job skill that includes sections for key achievements, areas for improvement, skills development, goals, and employee feedback. So the review should reflect your company goals, which you'll list in your prompt, and then you want it to be suitable for use in your annual performance review process. But don't stop there. Use the CIPD fact sheet, and we can upload a copy of that as well for the listeners, and ask it to give you guidance on good practice and provide justification for its responses. But then you need to go a little bit further and ask it for any questions for that clarification before responding to you in full. And even better than that, actually, Kieran, if, if organizations already have an existing annual performance review or some sort of performance review feedback mechanism, anonymize it, put that into the chat GPT prompt as well, upload your fact sheet and ask it to combine everything. It's not just about asking it singular questions at a point in time. It's about getting all that knowledge together we haven't had access to and starting to use it to the best of its ability. So we can absolutely share that for anyone that's listening, um, even if they drop some, some comments um, after sharing, but you'll be amazed at what it can come back with as well. And I would just finally say, don't take its first response, challenge it. Ask it for more detail, ask it for justification, ask it to think are there other ways that it hasn't considered and the employee feedback that it can maybe add value in there too as well. So hopefully that will help. It should. And we will. We'll put all those into the comments, put in your name, whatever you want. We'll get those things to you again. I would add on to that, the top end of that, say act as a yeah. CHRO. So you tell it what it is. And again, I love your point there, Claire, anonymize some of the yeah. content of the documents that you've got put them into the engine itself and say look here's a template or here's our company policies or here's the ultimate outcomes that we want to get as you say look 
the more information and the more guidance you provide, the better result you will get. And then when you do get the result, then you can start to panic about your job because you go, wow, that computer just did that instead. Look, folks, thank you so much for listening in today. Uh, we're looking forward to all of the episodes and all of our podcasts. We'll start at the very beginning and we'll move up and up and up the knowledge curve over the next numbers of weeks and months so that you do too. Claire, thank you so much indeed. Until thank next you, time, Kim. we'll see everybody soon. Thanks. Bye.